Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World War I, a new game out by Fury Software, published by Matrix and Slytherin Games. This is part number 10 of our Let's Play series in this new World War I game, and in this game we're playing as the Central Powers. Now, the war has not gone anything like the historical First World War. Uh, first off, we decided not to invade Belgium, uh, and as a result, we stayed on the defensive in the West. We transferred the majority of our troops either to the Austro-Hungarian, Eastern Prussian, or Serbian fronts. We have just concluded overrunning Serbia, Albania, and Montenegro. We have encircled a large pocket of Russian troops near Warsaw and are in the process of reducing that uh, into nothingness. And we have uh, now had the Italians join the war as per history against us, and we need to shift a large number of troops that way. The Central Powers, however, don't look anything like the historical Central Powers for two key reasons. One, the Bulgarians have entered the war early, thanks to our successes in Serbia. Two, the Belgians are on our side, because when we didn't invade Belgium, eventually the British and French, getting frustrated with their lack of success along the Franco-German border, decided to invade Belgium, which pushed Belgium into the side of the Central Powers, although the Allies are still not yet done conquering Belgium. That has not been a rapid uh a rap rapid event for them, and we haven't yet begun torpedoing American merchantmen either, and so we haven't crippled the British economy, but we also haven't pissed off the Americans. And that's the situation in the spring-summer of 1915. We're hoping to knock the Russians out of the war soon, but we'll see how long that takes, and uh, the Ottomans have just entered the war uh, as well on our side, so... That's the situation. That's enough of me rambling. Uh, this was all taken from a live stream from a couple of days back, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to my live stream itself. Hope you guys enjoy the video, and I'll catch you at the end. We'll employ divers equipped with explosives to strike at Italian warships in their home ports. This is a risky venture, but if successful, the damage inflicted could be quite significant. It'll cost us 50 MPPs. Austro-Hungarian saboteurs were active during the war, and they were, at the time, credited with sinking the Italian battleship Benedito Breen, though the actual case of the explosion that sank the ship may have been accidental. Hell yeah. Alright, so we're going to rail these troops at Gaza, south to... Wait, what just happened? Medina. Whoa, the map just... That was weird. Meanwhile, we're going to rail this core north, not to the front line, because you never want to rail troops directly into the front line, but we'll rail them north. Ship these troops over here. Shit. Uh, can I undo that? Nope. I can move them, but you usually don't want to force move a unit like that. All right. So we now have three corps that can face off against the British in Egypt. These troops here are going to rail to go deal with the uh, the insurgents. Meanwhile, the Ottoman 13th Corps will advance against the British at Kurna. You can see these troops down here are going to be deployed against the partisans in the south in, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, so Ottoman headquarters is going to be expanded to full strength. This garrison's going to rail to Medina as well to help support against these partisans. We probably need... We'll, so we'll have three garrisons down there for that. All right. Meanwhile, the Russian front... Let's entrench these guys on three sides. Move these guys over here and... Oh, we can't entrench them. Interesting. Okay. Reinforce this cavalry over here that suffered heavy losses. Shift these guys over here to fight against the zone's control. Entrench on three sides. These guys are a little bit exposed to this 10th Corps. We got a very fragile front against the Russians. The damn Russians! I've got too many men! Alright. March that garrison east to help against the Russians. Meanwhile, we need to quickly reduce the Albanians. So we'll do that. 
Tirana will fall. So the Albanian capital falls. So Albania will surrender to Bulgaria. God damn, my whole... My front lines are going to be so fucking weird. Uh, these troops here are dug in at level 3. So we'll attack with our marines there. Nice! Okay, I didn't even have to move all of our core units there. So that's good. So we're going to rail these German troops north to the Italian border. These guys already on the border are going to go ahead and entrench. Uh, these troops that we moved in will also entrench. All on three sides, all facing south. I wonder if you entrench on two sides. Is it the one thing I'm not super clear on in the game is if you entrench on three sides, is it actually a more effective, like a, a harder nut to crack or not? I'm not really sure. I don't know how all these detachments are going to hold up. They are in entrenchments, but they're heavily outnumbered by full size enemy cores. And well, those guys can move, so they'll do that and entrench. These Germans did move by rail and, and are maybe exposed to an unfavorable attack against the Italians here. We'll see. We probably need more than just attachments. I'm not really sure. We'll operate the troops in the south to the north. These guys are going to reinforce the troops along this northern mountain pass. These German troops are going to reinforce the troops near Klagenfurt. These guys cannot rail because they're not on a railway. Uh, let's see. All right, so we'll take that capital with Austro-Hungarian troops. I think the Bulgarians are mainly going to be used to fight on the Italian front. So we'll send these guys over here because there's two detachments of Bulgarian troops up there. Meanwhile, we want garrison at Pristina, which we have. We also want to send this headquarter unit to the Italian front. Move these guys up here. Rail this headquarter unit to Trieste. rather reinforce these guys than operate them this turn if I can. Okay, so Germany took Albania. Austria-Hungary took Ser Montenegro. Germany also took Serbia. Oops. Meanwhile, we do want to garrison at Belgrade to prevent partisans from rising up. I don't know what I'm going to deploy there yet. I guess we'll just... It's just the hex out. No, it's actually Belgrade itself. I hate to spend 36 points to make sure they don't revolt, but I will do that here. And then probably what we're going to do is leave one one Austro-Hungarian corps in... Actually, let's undo that. One along the rail line near Salonika. We'll leave one Bulgarian corps at Tiriana. And then we'll probably leave a garrison, or actually these German Marines will probably head south here. So we'll have three units along the Greek border, just in case. Okay. 
All right, so that does it for the Southern Theater. Meanwhile, Austro-Hungarian morale is off the charts, 121%. And with the fall of Montenegro and Serbia or in Albania, that should help their morale even more. Um, meanwhile, on the Russian front, these detachments will attack these troops. Zero to four. We'll mop them up with cavalry. So there's one of the units reduced. Ivangrod is a uh, morale center. Okay. Got him. All right, so Ivangrod is da is taken, as well as the fort there is heavily damaged. So another. That's another national morale center of the, of the Russians that falls. Let's actually attack Warsaw. Well. Maybe we shouldn't. I don't know if I actually can succeed here. Actually, we should be able to. Nice! So Warsaw falls to us. So that's going to cut supply entirely, I think, from both of these units. Their supply is already low, but it should completely cut them off. So more Russian units destroyed. Two Russian national morale centers are taken. The morale's are already below 60%. It'll fall even further at the end of this turn. Hey, uh, Time Achiever605, thanks for uh, tuning in. Glad you enjoyed the stream. I'll catch you around. Mm. Do that. Okay, so another Russian core shattered. The only thing left is these troops at Novo Grogovich. They're surrounded. They still have a little bit of supply left. But I'm confident we will we will reduce them next turn. And that will free up a whole bunch of German troops for a serious push against the Russians. Meanwhile, Another Russian core here is exposed, and we're able to destroy it just south of Koval. These troops here in the south will reinforce. This German core will also reinforce, since we're not going to attack with these guys this turn. We're going to reinforce with all of these troops along this line. Also move this artillery south there to help. All right, so they reinforce. Oh, they develop. Uh oh, the Russians have developed artillery level two. I'm guessing here because you can see the number one next to it, which indicates it's another tech level up. So. In order to destroy that artillery, I just raced this cavalry in to the rear near Vilnia. That was probably overly aggressive and stupid. I'm sure they'll get cut off next turn and probably destroyed. Although I am threatening Vilnia with two infantry corps advancing south behind Kovno. And actually... Hmm... 
We just badly battered a core to the south of Kovno as well. So that's a pretty good result for us. We'll move these troops over near Grondo, which is a supply center. These guys all already attacked. Okay, so can we move this guy into Lublin? No, not quite. Are there partisans we have to deal with in Poland? There are some in Russia, but not in Poland, so that's good. All right, so I think that'll help a lot on the Eastern Front. That probably about wraps up the Eastern Front for us. Hopefully this cavalry doesn't get surrounded beyond recall. Obviously these troops can advance north and cut them off pretty easily, but these troops are really battered. Vilnius is being threatened. You might see a Russian withdraw out of this pocket, if not, we might actually take Vilnia cheaply, because all they have is five in this headquarter unit there, and that'd be another national morale center down for the Russians. Which would also expand our, our Riga attack to uh, sort of further south and threaten to envelop the Brest-Litovsk line as well. Meanwhile, that uh, artillery is going to reinforce, and that, that's about all our money for the Austrians this turn. Uh... Meanwhile, this unit here, I'm going to gladly attack and destroy. Oh, crap. Didn't quite do it as cheaply as I would like. But we just destroyed another French unit here in the south. Keep picking off those French corps. Two more French corps. One south of Nancy. One north of Belfort. Both destroyed. Okay, we're reinforcing the German troops all along our line, who now have level two entrenchments thanks to our development of entrenchment technology. We'll also reinforce the Belgian troops up here. And if they do nothing next turn, I may attack this core here, advance to the salient, attack from three sides, and try and overwhelm and destroy them to strengthen our, our hold north here toward Antwerp. But Antwerp's going to fall soon, probably, anyway. I need to be spending money on, like, new artillery or other things like that. Research here, actually, for Germany. Heavy artillery or artillery weapons, we've almost gotten to level two anyway, so we're already researching that pretty heavily. Meanwhile... British destroyer that we just sailed right by. Okay. So the northern blockade is pretty empty. Is this guy actually in port? Damn it. Uh, I don't see where the British Navy is. Like, where are these guys? Oh, shit. The British fleet is in the English Channel. All right. So we're going to pull our fleet back, but I'll gladly destroy another British destroyer. Down they go. 
I'm a little bit of a coward with my German Navy. So I discovered at least a portion of the British Navy. I'm assuming it's a big portion of it. The blockade line is almost clear. Not quite. And so I'm going to pull my ships back to Germany. Our convoy routes are clear. The important thing is keeping the blockade to a minimum so that it's not very tight. As long as we continue to receive food supplies and whatnot, then the blockade can be managed. I don't want to get my fleet wiped out. And if we can destroy a few British destroyers and other things like that, that's the real goal. The goal is not to actually destroy the British Navy. That's not going to happen. You know, we spent a big chunk of our money reinforcing our fleet. Makes me wonder if that's actually a good investment or not. Okay. Alright, so in terms of naval strength, the British are at 33. I think that's down 2. Our Navy's at 27. Austria-Hungary is at 8. The Ottoman Empire is at 5. I'm guessing... There's no enemy fleet at Limos. I mean, I don't know where their navy would be based out of. Probably Cyprus over here. Where's the Italian Navy? They're not at Venice. They're probably down here at Taranto, right? Okay, so there's a British battle cruiser down here. The Indomit Indomitable is at Taranto. We've, meanwhile, we now have subs along that supply convoy. We'll actually put subs down here, too, where the convoys to North Africa, Italy, and the Western Med all converge on that one spot. We'll send Ottoman destroyers out here to raid this convoy hex as well. You know, the interesting thing is I could try and break these Ottoman naval vessels out. A pre-dreadnought, a battlecruiser, and a battleship, and a dreadnought battleship. That would give us, instead of just one dreadnought, it would give us essentially three dreadnought-type ships, three pre-dreadnought ships. That would actually be a little bit of a threat to the British, potentially. But I'm not quite ready to do that, because I'm not 100% convinced of the strength of the Royal Navy. Actually, maybe I shouldn't move these guys along the Greek trade routes. That might incite the Greeks against us. I mean, the Italian Navy was bigger than the Austro-Hungarian Navy, so presumably they've got substantial forces in the area. Okay. Um, that probably does it for this turn. The Russians were at, what, 58 units now? They're down to 47. It was a rough turn for the Russians. Huge losses for them. 1,500 almost. That's almost five turns of income for them. And I think we're ready to go. So let's go. Let's see what happens here as we move into June of 1915. Now you want some cheese? Cheese is good. Russian morale falls due to the loss of Warsaw. Germany celebrates the capture of Warsaw. The loss of Ivangrad reduces Russian national morale. Albania surrenders. Montenegro surrenders. Austro-Hungary plunders 100 MPPs. I 
I had a cat growing up. I always had a cat growing up, and I always, you know, I, I liked the cat, but I never quite had the same affinity for my cats growing up as I do for my dog now. With Albania and friendly hands, we could increase our strength in the area by forming a detachment from Albanian volunteers to be called the Albanian Legion. Forming this unit will cost us 50 MPPs, and they will deploy at Tririana. Uh, during Austria-Hungary's Austria occupation of Albania, efforts were made to win the support among the population. Infrastructure was built up using... Uh, Use of the Albanian language was encouraged, and men were recruited to serve in the armed forces. Saying yes is recommended, as it will increase our strength in the region for little cost. Sure. So we get a free garrison unit. That'll be nice. That'll free more troops to move north to deal with Italy. The Greeks used to eat cheese to enhance their dreams. Ancient Greeks. It's good to know. Trench Warfare Development up to level 60. Austria-Hungary develops Logistics level 1. Ottoman Empire de develops Command and Control level 1. Spying and Intelligence Improvements. Okay. We're still receiving food shipments through the Netherlands, by the way. Meanwhile, our Norwegian supply line is basically cut to ribbons. You're allergic to cats. You know, if I touch a cat and then touch my eyes, I definitely have, like, a reaction to it. Um, why did you do that, Russia? That was dumb. That was very dumb. They just advanced to dumb. Meanwhile, this submarine is acting as a, at least a, a blocking force in the, the channel, perhaps. Lots of enemy destroyers. Three stackers moving in on our subs. Oh my god, they have so many destroyers. Half their navy has to... This is interesting, though. They have 30... Uh, fucking seaplane tenders. They have a lot of auxiliaries. I don't know how many actual battleships they have. They might only have one or two more than us, to be honest. And if they've got some in the med, I don't... We might actually have a stronger force in Europe than, than they do. It's interesting. Our cavalry, by the way, just got cut off there south of Vilnia. Meanwhile, the French moving in replacement troops to the areas that we destroyed their troops in. Actually, if they want to rail troops to the front line, that's good, because they're not going to um, hurt. I don't know if, Jatsy, I don't know if I'm going to raid at all. I mean, in all honesty, I don't know if I'm even going to try and attack. I've already chosen not to use unrestricted submarine warfare, and I don't know if I'm going to change my mind on that. I really don't want to bring the U.S. into the war into a war that I'm pretty content with how it's going at the moment. It feels like, at the latest, it would be 1916 when we would knock Russia out of the war well early. And as long as I don't drop on those supply lines, I would think the uh, yeah those Russians are trying to defect. Maybe. Uh, but I don't think as long as I don't drop any units on the supply lines that the Americans are going to get super antsy and go to war with us. At least that's my hope is that they don't. The Russian fleet at Tresbon. We should destroy the Russian fleet. Totally. That will hurt their morale, and that will make them more likely to fall apart, right? With the addition of the Sultan Osman, we have two dreadnoughts that we can deploy to the Black Sea. I'm guessing that is stronger than the Russian fleet. So if they leave their warships down here near Tresbon, what is with the AI and their seaplane tenders? Seaplane tenders were not everywhere in the world in World War I, were they? They had a few... All right, so that garrison unit, those Belgian, th that Belgian detachment's a goner. They're hanging in there, but there they go. Meanwhile, the Italians are attacking toward Trento against our garrison unit there. Those detachments aren't holding up super well. The only saving... Oh. Did they take the city? I don't... It doesn't look like they took it yet, but they probably could. Meanwhile, the Belgians are cut off in the north near Antwerp. Their headquarters is about to be destroyed. Russian cavalry just got ravaged by those, those Ottomans, though. Yeah, I'm using the, uh, the subs as scouts, and they're pretty useful for that. Meanwhile, they didn't take Trento, but they did destroy that detachment there pretty easily. 
yeah, that's a good comparison. Escort carriers and seaplane tenders seem to be about the same thing. Interestingly, the uh, French did not deploy troops to that one sector in the south, that salient that I destroyed multiple times. If the Russian fleet stays there, I'm going to go for it. Prices rise, trigger a wave of strikes in Russia. Workers in the Ukraine strike for better conditions. Central power raiders are disrupting UK convoys and Italian convoys. Russian morale falls below 50%. Huzzah. I think if you get to zero, they surrender, but I'm guessing at some point before that, you can trigger a revolution, I'm just assuming. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and jump in here and wrap this one up. I hope you guys enjoyed yet another episode of Strategic Command World War I. And as I always like to say, until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.